Good afternoon. Good. My name is Florian Holzbauer, and I'm presenting Not That Simple, email delivery in the 21st century. In the next 20 minutes, I will present you how we measured email rated standards. So why do we bother looking at email delivery if sending an email looks that simple? Because the number of email rated RFCs has increased dramatically over the past 30 years. And the number has went up from um, below 100 to nearly um, for 400 to 500. But not all of the standard, not all of these RFCs represent standards. Only the bottom three um, statues on the left um, belong to the standards track. And we have about 225 proposed standards, and some of them um, actually influence email delivery. So we have extended SMDP with various standards to provide protection in transit, to add authenticity to email delivery, and some of this impacts um, delivery. So the, the problem is that we have this huge number of standards, and it's hard to keep track for operators um, what standards to implement and in which configurations. So we do measurements to um, gain an overview of how standards are implemented and to help operators decide on which standards to implement. This brings me to the outline of this talk. I will first um, talk about the scope and then we will um, do a short background on email delivery. Then we talk about the measurement setup and I present our data sets and our findings at the end. So there are two perspectives in email delivery, and the first is the sender side, and the second is the receiver side. On the sender side, we have, um, for successful mail delivery, we, ha we have um, two questions. Is the sender able to reach the receiver? And the second question is, how do these additional standards that provide authenticity in impact email delivery? And on the receiver side, because there is a huge number of unsolicited bulk mail, we cannot accept every incoming email. So we have to somehow weed out some mails. And the, the, the question on the receiver side is, should the receiver accept incoming email? And this topic is broadly covered by related measurements. And if you're interested in that, you can look at our paper. We have a pretty uh, big section about this, where we summarize related work and also present our findings in our data sets. So let's focus on email delivery from the sender side. First, a mail user agent um, connects to the outgoing mail server for um, mail delivery. And after successful mail submission, the mail transfer agent has to find out where to send this email to. So we will ask his resolver um, to resolve the mail exchange record of the receiver domain. And the resolver, if it doesn't have the answer in the cache, will perform a recursive DNS lookup and the request will finally land at the authoritative DNS server of the recipient's domain. And the authoritative DNS server will return the answer, and then we can also look up the IP address of the target server and initiate the SMTP connection, which you saw on the first slide. So this brings us to uh, mail delivery, but currently this mail delivery is in plain text. So, um, in regard of confidentiality, integrity, authenticity, um, and also from the DNS lookup side, we don't have integrity and authenticity. So in the real world, actually, a huge number of um, email in transit are encrypted, but the mail server, the sending mail server, does not know in beforehand if encryption is available. So he will connect to the uh, receiver's um, mail transfer agent and the mail, uh, receiver's mail transfer agent will then be able to offer the start TLS option, so to encrypt traffic. And then the, the sender mail transfer agent can take the opportunity and encrypt this traffic. So we first start in clear text and then we change to encrypted traffic. But as opportunistic encryption is, we, um, it is defined to accept every receiver certificate, doesn't matter um, if it's expired 
or if it's self-signed, so we do not verify the validity of the certificate. So um, it prevents passive eavesdropping, so wiretapping, but if um, an active attacker presents a wrong certificate, so we are still vulnerable to monkey in the middle attacks, downgrade attacks, if this star TLS option is stripped from the traffic. And um, so why don't we use this um, second channel via DNS to enhance this, um, um, so to enhance this um, mail delivery and we protect this second channel, we can protect the second channel via DNSSEC. So to actually verify um, the integrity and authenticity of the DNS um, responses. So this works by cryptographically, um, cryptographically um, signing the DNS records. And then we can verify if the answer is correct or was maybe spoofed. So um, if we secure the second channel, we can also um, put information there that encryption is available beforehand. So the MX record alone doesn't hint if encryption is available, but we can put a TLSA record there that um, provides certificate information and the sending mail server knows beforehand that the receiver will provide or will um, have encry encryption available. And this is a far better setup because now we can check the certificate of the receiver server and check its validity. So from the security perspective, we now um, check all these um, boxes, confidentiality, integrity, authenticity. And for domains that, have not, um, that are not able to sign their records via the NSSEC, we can also, um, there was also a second standard um, developed, mail transfer agent strict transfer policy, and this is for domains that cannot sign their records via the NSSEC. But it works as the same principle. We have the second channel and we hint that encryption is available. So for our measurement, we focused on email delivery after successful email submission. Um, so when the email sender provider tries to deliver its email to the receiver's provider. And yes, as, in the, as said in the introduction, we had different setups that allowed us um, to check whether an, an sender supports certain standards or um, supports um, encrypted mail delivery. Um, and we can check was the email delivered or not. So this setup allows us um, to measure email standards, but it also allows users to check their email providers. Does my provider support a certain standard? And it's also for operators to see if their setup works as expected. So they can verify their email delivery with our measurement addresses. So what did we configure? Um, we looked at the ongoing transition to the IPv6 internet, and we both measured the mail service and the DNS res resolution. And our setup looks as follows. We had these different IP, level, uh, IP levels configured. Here you can so see all the combinations. And then we can verify if there's a DNS resolution is possible via IPv6 and if mail um, transport is possible via IPv6. So our second goal was to measure opportunistic versus strict TLS configurations. So we looked um, how many providers are still um, transporting mail in clear text, how many um, react to TLS enforcement on the receiver side, so how many actually support um, providing this star TLS um, encryption. We also look if providers would validate certificates, and we looked at this um, downgrade man in the middle protection um, with Dane. So how can you measure that? Our measurement targets once provided um, no encryption at all, and then we can look how many will deliver mail to a target without encryption available. And on the second target, we enforced TLS to see if um, how many providers would be able to deliver mail encrypted. 
we had an invalid certificate on the mail server to check if anyone would validate it. And we also, uh, our last setup was um, that we provided a certificate in DNS, but it didn't match the certificate that was on the mail server. And furthermore, we looked at DNS validation, so how many resolvers would actually validate uh, the DNS responses, and we provided an invalid chain of trust, and based, of related, based on related work, about 30% of DNS sec zones, signed zones, do not provide this chain of trust, so this is the number one error when configuring DNS sec. And the last case was that we wanted to check if um, senders are RFC conform, so if they actually tried to re-deliver mail in case of a temporary error. So spammers usually do not keep the state, and if a temporary error occurs, they do not try to uh, re-deliver emails a second time. And based on the setups, we collected different data sets. We um, wanted to look at um, regular providers in the email ecosystem. We looked at a set of large providers. And then finally, we also looked at how spammers would re react to these certain setups. And for regular providers, we had to um, ask people around the globe to send mail to our target setups. So it required active user action. And we promoted this campaign for over a year via several channels and via mailing lists around the globe. We had around, um, we had 622 participants from um, belonging to um, 436 providers below, um, from 53 countries around the world. And with that number, 6,842 um, mails were attempted to deliver. And the, the actual number of mails we received were 4,660. And the requirement was that at least one mail of the 11 different measurement setups would reach our system. So we can verify to um, if the, the mails were sent to all the other measurement addresses. So if mail delivery was attempted. And for large providers, we um, registered accounts at the most large providers used, um, or we, we collected uh, the large provider list by looking at passive DNS. So we looked at how many um, email domains point their mail exchange records at a certain domain. And we had the Farsight DNS um, database available with a um, one month um, of a mix lookups. This resulted in seven 3 million DNS lookups. And at the right, you can see we list the top five providers. They are accountable for 27% of uh, mail um, around the globe. And then this is followed by a, a, a heavy tail of smaller providers. So we compared our list with related work. And we can see that related work has usually different perceptions of large providers. So the overlap between manual rankings is really low. Around the globe, the only provider found in all large providers' data set is Google. So no, others, no other large providers did match in this, in this data set. And I think for, for emulated measurements, it's really important that we find a, a common perception of large providers. So our method and the method from Leo et al, who used um, an active measurement. So he collected mail exchange records and certificate information, and we used passive DNS, um, are the latest two um, methods to rank large providers. And we have also the most um, large providers in common. So the last data set, we registered five, uh, 50 um, spam domains. And we looked at different categories, um, which are more likely to receive spam, and we found out that um, mostly uh, older domains receive more spam. And I will uh, fasten this a little up to come to the, uh, to the findings of our work. So um, we pointed these 50 expired domains to our measurement setups. We had a baseline plane, for uh, plane IPv4 delivery. And then after the, the, the baseline, we pointed them to our different measurement targets to see if spam volume decreases or 
um, not. And the spam, um, we received about 6,700 emails, came from um, mostly from China, so 28% came from China, and from USA um, came around 21% of emails. And the rest of the countries are around 5% or less. So if you look at the findings, um, if you look at how many senders can actually deliver mail to IPv6 only targets and look at um, our first setup, we see that um, DNS IPv6 resolution is supported by two thirds of providers, but uh, mail delivery is only su supported by 20% uh, less. So um, mail is a little behind DNS in IPv6 support. And for TLS configuration, um, we have the setups. We look at plain text delivery. So um, nearly every provider will still deliver emails in plain text, and only 1%, so this relates to five providers in our data set, um, did not uh, refrain from sending emails in plain text. When we enforced start TLS on the receiver side, we found 10% of uh, regular providers were still not able to encrypt messages in transit, but all large providers were capable of doing so. When we provided an invalid certificate, only one regular provider validated the certificate, and all large providers accepted the certificate. And the first um, setup where we enforced TLS um, led to 22% of regular providers um, that validated this certificate mismatch and 23% of large providers validated the certificate mismatch. So um, TLS enforcement is actually getting validated more and more because related work found far less validation rates. And coming to DNS validation, which is the foundation for um, providing certificates over DNS. And here we can see a large discrepancy between regular providers and large providers. Um, far more um, regular providers did validate our DNS responses than large providers did. So they do this because there are still a lot of DNS misconfigurations and they would actually lose a large um, range of receivers where they cannot deliver mails to if an DNS error occurs. And finally, we look at spam volume, we had this gray listing um, applied that led to 37% less spam. And then we have um, our IPv6 only DNS resolution target. Um, this decreased um, spam volume by around half. So um, a lot of spam senders rely on public resolvers that are actually capable of performing DNS uh, IPv6 resolution. And when we enforce TLS on the, send, uh, on the receiver side, we see that um, um, mail, uh, spam volume decreased by 66%. So a lot of spammers are not capable of performing TLS sign checks or refrain from doing so because it's an overhead for them and they don't need it to actually send emails. And we also see that there is um, far less spam volume on IPv6 if we uh, have IPv6 only um, a mail receiver, an IPv6 only mail receiver. So this brings me to the conclusion that um, for mail transfer agents and resolvers, mail transfer agents are behind in IPv6 support because far more resolvers support um, IPv6 DNS resolution than mail transfer agents support IPv6 delivery. We have an increasing um, support for enforcing TLS, but still every large provider um, delivers mail in plain text if we do not provide these TLSA records in DNS. And after our measurement period, also large providers, really large providers like Microsoft announced TLSA support. So it's really good to announce these records via DNS. And we also see the, the, the discrepancy in DNS sec validation between large and smaller providers. So large providers um, have a different standpoint in standard adoption than smaller providers do. So 
um, a lot of measurements forget to measure these this, um, regular providers. So we only look at the large providers. Uh, but a lot of um, regular providers have higher DNS accreditation rates than these large providers do. And the last point is also that um, we want to keep um, reachability at our first target, but um, security comes second. So this is what makes um, millinery not that simple. So um, we published our measurement infrastructure via GitHub. If you want to look at RFCs and um, RFCs belonging to a certain topic, we, we plan to publish this RFC search tool. And we also plan to make a web app for our email delivery um, measurement addresses. So simple users can also check their email providers. And at the right, I post a QR code to my Twitter where I will announce these um, plans in the future. So thank you, and I'm ready to take any questions.